Hello, this is Phil Hinton. I'm the editor of AV Forums. And on the 19th of November 2019, Philips TV held an event at the Dolby London HQ in Soho Square, where they invited 30 members and readers of AV Forums along to see their 2019 lineup of OLED Plus TVs, as well as sample the delights of the Dolby grading rooms and cinema facilities. It was open to any reader, and all they had to do was apply through the contact details in the thread posted on the forum. The evening kicked off with Philips picture quality guru Danny Tack giving a demo of the new TVs and the third generation of P5 processor. So why did Philips hold the event? Now we um, we know that uh, your readers uh, like uh, Dolby Vision and we thought it was a perfect opportunity of uh, getting them in this Dolby uh, laboratory, showing them uh, lots of Dolby stuff, uh, but also we, uh, of course me, I want to show uh, the people also how good our P5 picture processing is on SDR sources and on Dolby Vision sources as we have this on our Dolby Vision bright mode. We have our P5 engine working. So your TVs for uh, 2018 and 2019 have Dolby Vision on board and Dolby Vision, it's Dolby Vision Vivid, Dolby Vision Bright and Dolby Vision Dark. Now in Dark, it's as the creator intended, isn't it? Correct. We have two modes. We have the Dolby Vision Dark and the Dolby Vision Bright mode. The Dolby Vision Dark, we don't touch. It's like the director intended and we follow the rules of the game there. Uh, but in the Dolby Vision Bright, we agreed with Dolby that we would do some uh, uh, P5 picture processing. As we also know that some of our picture quality engine, even on an HDR signal, can make it different in, for, in many cases a lot better. So how do you make Dolby Vision better with the P5? We uh, use our sharpness enhancement, which are many different elements. We also, uh, in cases of very noisy uh, sources with Dolby Vision, we can uh, denoise uh, less MPEG artifacts and we uh, can have our uh, motion compensation uh, working on it. The five, so from the five P5 elements, three of them are uh, working at its best. So you've got AV Forums members coming along tonight. It's a Philips event. You want to show them this. Um, our audience are very much as the creator intended. So how are you going to try and change their mind as to how the presentation should be? Well, first of all, um, uh, I'm going to show them that what they like, uh, the, the director intent that we have that uh, we take care of that in our movie modes uh, in SDR and also in HDR on the Dolby Vision and the Dolby Vision Dark Mode. But uh, I want to bring take them one step further and show them, for instance, Dolby Vision Bright or SDR with P5 picture processing and show them how well balanced we make a picture sharper, more colorful, more contrast still keep uh, as much as possible that creative intent but on a brighter scale and meaning that when you then watch your tv at home during uh, daylight conditions you have still that director intent feel but uh, under the right light conditions um, some may say your approach is, is is a little odd in that you're taking the director's intent and then saying you can do better um, what would you say to that? Because a lot of filmmakers actually recently have said they want manufacturers like Philips to switch off all the processing, switch off the smoothing, so people can see their movies as they're intended to be seen. I, I think it's a matter of taste. And I, I don't say better, I say it's different. Um, personally, I like it more. Uh, I don't like uh, a lot of judder on a picture like there's an, now a lot of uh, talks about in Hollywood, uh, guys like Tom Cruise are promoting uh, that it should uh, judder because that's how the director intended. I like to have it fluent uh, there. And I think many people at home also want to see their scenes in, in a very fluent way. So what are you hoping? I mean, obviously the people are still to turn up this evening. You still have to go through your, your demonstration. At the end of the day, what is it that you're hoping uh, those those members from AV Forums think at the end of your demo? I, I hope to get them a little bit uh, change in their mind of not going for fully director intent mode, but uh, use here and there bits and pieces from our P strong, powerful picture uh, P5 picture processor. 
for me, they don't need to use everything. They don't need to use the vivid mode where everything is working at its uh, maximum uh, level. But uh, be aware of what uh, the, the strengths and the weaknesses of this processing are and, and use it. There's a lot of competition in the market with OLED at the moment. What, what is it that you think makes your Philips TV stand out against the competition? Exactly that picture processor, because the screens, we all know they're coming from the same manufacturer. Everybody's using uh, LG D OLED screens. The differences then you see on those OLED screens are coming from the picture processor. And we have in previous events also, uh, with you use, um, helping us as a calibrator, we have done those shootouts and have been winning those uh, shootouts because of our picture, uh, picture processing. After Danny's demo session, the AV Forum's readers were then split into three groups, with each visiting a different area of the Dolby building, so everyone had three further demos. Next was the grading suite, and a demonstration of how Dolby Vision is graded and finished for home viewing. So we caught up with Ian from Dolby to explain what Dolby Vision is. So, so the aim of Dolby Vision is to, which is the difference between the other uh, formats, is to uh, grade once, so grade that HDR master in the big space with, with all of those uh, uh, storytelling tools, and then uh, to do what we call a Dolby Vision analysis to generate uh, the Dolby Vision metadata. And this is like a recipe for your uh, for the what was seen in the colorist suite and and how that is delivered out to the home television so the aim of dolby vision is to really join the colorists and directors intent right the way through to how it's seen in the home irrespective of the the nit level of the television now let's come on to this question because it's a question that gets asked quite uh, quite often are we actually seeing what the director intended with a consumer level TV? So the aim of, uh, of, of what you're seeing behind us is a 4,000 nit uh, uh, consumer display, a uh, consumer display, professional display. Uh, and um, you'll see later with some of the other demos, the consumer representation of that. So there aren't consumer devices at this uh, luminance level. And so we're using uh, the Dolby Vision metadata to map that in. Uh, you will see demos where it maintains the creative intent. And this is a big attraction for people because if you're making a movie or a TV series, you want to know that whoever sees it in whatever format has a good impression. So the Dolby Vision version will give you a great Dolby Vision version on a TV at home. It will equally look good in HDR10 and it will look equally good in SDR, and it will have what we refer to as the same DNA. It's one grade mapped into wherever those uh, versions exist. All of them are creatively signed off, so there isn't anything where there's uh, a kind of automated process that does something without a creative sign off. Next was the Dolby Cinema demo, which, as you can imagine, we couldn't film for copyright reasons. And then we headed for a demo of the OLED Plus 984 and its Bowers & Wilkins soundbar. So Andy, you're finally going to have some AV Forums members here tonight. What is it you're dying to show them? Well, I think everything that we've been talking about for the last year, year and a half on our relationship with Philips TV. So. It's kind of building up, building up, if you like, to this moment of creating, you know, fantastic sound from TV. Obviously, we, we achieved a lot, a bit of a breakthrough last year with the 903, which you guys all know about, and I think it was very popular at the time. Uh, the, two, the two sets that we're talking about this year, I think, both represent, you know, significant step forwards in, in what we're working to achieve together as, as partners. So, we're very proud of them both. We're going to give people a chance to hear them both. So, the one behind you here, mm -hmm. 984, mm -hmm. what makes it so special? Starting off with the fact that it's got its own separated loudspeaker enclosure, there's so much that you can do there, both from the point of view of us as, as the acoustic team and obviously working you know, with Danny and the Philips team from the point of view of PQ as well, I think that's really important to understand. Being able to put the audio into its own separated enclosure means we can drive the system harder. At the same time, we can do that without influencing the PQ in any way, which is obviously fundamental. That's what you buy a TV set for in the first place. Um, so that's great. Then in terms of being able to incorporate key technologies, we've got a lot of the things that you know most people in Bowers and Wilkins are familiar with, you know, the, the tweeter on top technology, the separated enclosures, the decoupling systems, things that I think last year we'd love to have been able to incorporate, but of course because of time frames and whatever else there wasn't necessarily the opportunity. This time around uh, we've really been able to go to town and obviously you guys alongside many other people have kind of recognised just how good it is, so we're very pleased with that. 
So with the demos all finished, what did the AV Forum's members think of the evening? So let's take a look at the TVs. So Danny showed you um, uh, a Vivid mode that they've been working on for a while and put it side by side with two other TVs. What did you think? Uh, the Vivid mode was, was really, really impressive. Really bright colours, but, but not overboard bright colours. It, they, they, they've done a, Philips have done a really good job at, 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 at mapping the technology. Really good. First of all, we all agree, we, ask, we all asked him not to call it Vivid Mode anymore. Master, whatever, call it something else. I think I'm starting to change my mind on that mode. I will not call it Vivid, as long as they tone down the colours, which he started to do. So, Philips listened and really improved. Um, so, first of all, we tend to think of Vivid Mode as being an arch, as a coloration that's used to sell televisions in a store environment. But this was quite different. This sort of created a more transparent picture that was sharper, um, that seemed to eliminate Jada and a lot of the problems associated with traditional cinema mode. So would you use it? Um, I would use it, but um, at the same time it's not perfect, but it's, it certainly has a lot of advantages compared to traditional cinema modes. And uh, in the grading suite, you saw the, the Pulsar, which is 4,000 nits against the 1,000 nit uh, Philips TV. There were some differences, but how do you think the Philips stood up to that? It even hurts me to say that uh, the Philips was incredibly close. I'm actually shocked how close it was. Very impressive for the difference in price and technology. So really, Philips stepped it up. I, ha I have to give them hats off. Well, well. The 4000 nit was, was fantastic, it was better than the, the, the Philips TV, but the Philips TV really, really mapped it well. The, the, we, we showed a clip uh, of a concert and it really, really mapped it very, very well. This is a really tough one for the Philips because of course the professional monitor, um, it's an LED backlit LCD and it can produce a lot more peak brightness. However, although um, it may seem a lot more impressive, if you when the frame is frozen and you look clearly, you can see that just as with the demonstration on the Samsung LCD compared to the Philips OLED, when you look at a black background compared to bright stars, the whites are sort of, there's less detail. The professional monitor actually has its disadvantages compared to the Philips. And uh, finally, Dolby Cinema, it, 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 it's okay, isn't it? I'm going to watch Star Wars in the Lister Square, that's how good it is. And I'm not going ever again in my local cinema. Oh, the, the cinema, the cinema was absolutely unbelievable. Uh, anybody who goes in there will, will be absolutely amazed. The, as you said, the, the sound just comes up from me from behind. It's, it's just incredible, absolutely incredible. Uh, that was really impressive. The sound was really impressive, as was the picture. So in terms of uh, this evening, What's the things that you're going to take away? Oh, for just a fantastic experience. AV Forums have put on a fantastic, fantastic job tonight with, with Philips and, and Dolby. And it's, it, it, I would highly recommend anybody getting another opportunity to, 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 uh, to come and uh, come along. Uh, blown away, actually. I'm really, really grateful to Philips. And we had the chance to see TVs, we had the chance to see the cinema and we had to send chance to see the, the grading. So fantastic evening. And to wrap up the evening, one lucky attendee had their name drawn from the bowl to win a Philips OLED TV. Yeah, it's my handwriting, so you might get the name wrong, but It's Mo? Mo Olovinia! <laughs> Oh. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So it's my terrible, it's my terrible handwriting. Well, congratulations on winning the TV. Wow. <laughs> oh my God, I am completely gobsmacked. So, have you got an OLED already, or is this a first I one? I have. Uh, I have. I have an LG OLED. So, um, this is uh, a great dilemma now as to where I'm going to stick this one. <laughs> Well, let's uh, move back to this evening. Uh, you've seen the cinema, you've seen the grading suite, you've had the demonstration from Danny. What's the highlight for you other than winning the TV? I think fantastic. Um, it's been really informative in terms of understanding what is on offer in terms of the Philips displays um, and their picture processing 
engine, even for enthusiasts who want the real image. I think Philips offer a compelling argument in a world of competition uh, from the other big manufacturers, so that's been very interesting. I think similarly uh, from grading through to um, Adobe Cinema, that's been a rarefied highlight which most enthusiasts will not get access to, so I feel we're quite honoured uh, as a community of attendees here to see that in action and see clips and be immersed in the experience from a top-end Pulsar monitor all the way through to a, a Dolby Cinema private screening room. So that's been absolutely amazing. So it's really been well worth uh, uh, the, uh, the travel and the attendance for this event.